Earth is the only place in the universe where we know for sure that there's life. But what about elsewhere in the solar system? I'm going to be looking at five of our neighboring worlds where we might find evidence of life, either past or present. And I'm going to give you these in reverse order from fifth to first. At number five, Venus. Now, Venus and Earth are both rocky worlds. They're similar in size. And Venus comes closer to the Earth than any other planet. But in other ways, they're totally different. You wouldn't last for a minute. You wouldn't survive for a minute on Venus, even with a spacesuit, because the surface temperature is more than 460 Celsius. The atmospheric pressure is so great it would be like standing 900 meters underwater on Earth. And to cap it off, your remains would be dissolved by acid because it rains sulfuric acid on Venus. So if it's such a terrible place, why do I have it on my short list for life? Well, in the past, Venus was probably a friendlier place. It would, would have been cooler. Uh, its atmosphere wouldn't have been as thick. It may even have had oceans on the surface. So there's a possibility that in the past, life may have developed there. Well, we're certainly not going to find life on the surface of Venus today because something went horribly wrong. At some point, Venus gained this tremendous carbon dioxide atmosphere. And of course, we know from Earth that the more we pump carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, the greater the greenhouse effect. On Venus, this became a runaway greenhouse effect and the temperature soared. In fact, Venus is hotter than Mercury, even though Mercury is closer to the sun. So we're almost certainly not going to find anything on the surface of Venus today. But imagine that life did develop there in the past. What about if it escaped? Where would it escape to? Perhaps into the atmosphere? Because there is a layer of Venus's atmosphere between about 50 and 60 kilometers above the surface where conditions are quite mild, almost Earth-like in temperature. And we found some very interesting substances in this layer. One of them is carbonyl sulfide, for example, which on Earth is produced by living organisms. It's also produced in volcanic eruptions as well. Also, in this layer, something is absorbing ultraviolet light. When you look at Venus in ultraviolet, you see dark bands. Something in that layer is causing that absorption and we're not sure what it is. Back in 1963, Carl Sagan speculated that maybe the absorption was by colonies of microbes. It's one theory of many. But recently, and I'm doing this talk now in November 2020, so I'm talking a couple of months ago, so in September, a group of scientists announced that they had detected phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus. Now, on Earth, phosphine is a gas that is only produced by living organisms, by microbes. You can make it in the lab, but we don't know of any other natural process by which phosphine arises. Well, there's a debate going on now whether the phosphine detection was real or not, and if it is real, are there other explanations? that we don't yet know about, geological or chemical. We don't know at the moment. We need more information, either from ground-based telescopes or preferably by a spacecraft that is sent to Venus specifically to examine the atmosphere and find out what it's made of and what's going on there.